Hey guys, I'm really excited for this one. And thanks so much to Marvel Snap for sponsoring this video. If you guys didn't know, I played Marvel Snap quite a bit in the beta and just picked it up again with the full release. I think I'm around collection level 500, a little over 500 or so. So definitely not, uh, not brand new. Uh, Snap was designed to be a collectible card game that Marvel fans could really love, and it truly is. Uh, the game was developed by a name that I'm sure you are all familiar with. The card game and rap legend himself, Ben Brode. His new company, Second Dinner, has been working on the game for quite some time now. So my plan today is to walk you through the general gameplay flow, give a few tips, and hopefully be a really nice first introduction to Marvel Snap. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, before we jump into a game, let me just show you around the interface. It's all pretty self-explanatory, but if you've never played before, this might be helpful. Uh, so this is your main screen where you can click to start a game. Play will take you directly into into uh, into the action. Uh, you can click here to change your decks. Uh, I have a few different types of decks. We'll just stick with this one that's meta. That's definitely not meta anymore, but at some point in time it, it, uh, it was. People have progressed a little farther than I am uh, at this point. Uh, you can go in here and uh, see what's available in the store. Make sure you get your free credits here each day. Free, free. Don't miss out on free. And um, yeah, you can you can kind of see your daily offers. Sometimes there'll be cool uh, cool variants and such in, in, in the shop. Uh, this is where you go and make decks. So you can adjust your decks, you can modify them. This is the one that I'll be using right now. I'm not gonna get into too much detail about it, but um, yeah, that's where you, you can uh, get all that set up. This is where you look at your progress on the rewards track. Um, and then finally missions. So this is where you can see all of your, your progress on uh, everything that, that earns you XP and uh, progress on the rewards track and all that. So definitely a really important place to, to check out. And uh, when I was playing a lot during the beta, I spent a lot of time just kind of min-maxing here, making sure I got everything done each day. Uh, and it really helps. So I would highly recommend to check here and see, you know, if you're close to finishing up a mission, you know, hammer it out. The games are quick, uh, get, get it done. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the general interface. You can see your collection level up here. So I'm 534. As your collection level increases, you get rewards. Um, and you know, it goes up and up and up. I don't know if there's a max exactly, but uh, it's a lot higher than what I, I currently am at. All right, so let's um, let's just jump into play. Let's uh, let, let's see how it works. Very quick cues, as you can as you can tell. So start of the game, there's no like mulligan or anything. This is your starting hand down down here. Um, you can see down here, this is how much energy you have. So in the top left, you can see one energy. So these cards are playable. One energy on turn one, um, and then. You can see up here you have three different locations. I'm keeping an eye here on the intern thing. Make sure I play this uh, just just so I don't run out of time. But each of these locations drastically change gameplay. So you want to pay a lot of attention to what's happening at these locations, and they're they're revealed in order. So first one, second one, third one, in, in that order. So each turn, your amount of energy goes up by one, kind of akin to mana in, in other games. Um, so now I'm able to play this two mana card because, you know, I, I, have, I have one more, well, two energy cards, sorry, uh, because I have one, one more energy. Uh, so get that down. Let's see. So ongoing effects here are doubled. Uh, do we have any ongoing effects? I think I still will just play this one here because I don't know what this one will be. Sometimes it's risky to just play stuff without knowing what the location is going to be because sometimes it'll be, uh, you can only have one card here. So if you play a, a low energy cost card there, then you know, you're know you just gonna basically lose when your opponent plays a, a high energy cost card, if that, if that makes sense in that, in that one spot. So there's definitely mind games involved in where you play your cards and how you decide where to play what. I don't wanna get into too much of that detail, but there's a lot of, of kind of hidden complexity uh, because of that. All right, so I have uh, three three energy now, so I'm gonna play both of these. This card, uh, if your opponent played a card here this turn, draw a card from their deck on reveal. So you wanna kinda play this where you think they're gonna play a card. Uh, so where, I would guess they're gonna play a card here because wh whoever has more cards here gets plus 100 power, so it just kinda makes sense. Um, I'll get I'll get the, uh, the Nightcrawler down as well on this turn. Uh, one thing, to note is up here at the top, I don't think I mentioned this yet, this is where you can snap your opponent. So I would just do it here. 
just to show you guys. You basically play for more cubes. You want to snap when you are feeling confident, because um, you basically lose or win more uh, when when you click that <laughs> that button. Uh, there's obviously some mind games with it though too, right? Kind of akin to poker. Like you can bluff with it, like, oh yeah, I'm really strong. I'm gonna snap here. When in actuality, you're probably gonna lose, but it's it's risky. It's definitely a risky strategy, but it, it's just an, another level of complexity that's added to the game um, along with along with locations, which really just increase the replayability of, of the game. Okay, four mana, let's play our four mana card. This one is your one cost cards have plus one power. I have quite a few one cost cards. Um, ongoing effects are doubled. That is an ongoing effect, correct? Yep, so let's put it here to get the maximum effect from it. Uh, go ahead and end our turn. One other thing to note, the way that you win in Marvel Snap is by winning two of the three locations. So basically your objective should be to do that. Um, and so, it, you know, you kind of have to reevaluate in when it gets to the late game so now we're already coming up in the late game it's turned five out of six so six turns total um and you're like okay am i strong here my my opponent has really committed to this other quadrant do i still have a chance to win it um you know or should i just kind of give up on that one quadrant or that one location uh you know so there's, there's a lot of a lot of mind games involved in that i'm just gonna play my strongest card here marvel it's another ongoing card i believe Ongoing your other cards have plus one power, so it's just going to get a lot of benefit from being in the middle. So just going to go ahead with that. Uh, Nightcrawler, I can move on turn six if I want um, to adjust to, to how they're playing. So right now, it feels like I could maybe win the middle one here. So now we're ahead in there. Um, this one, our opponent hasn't committed at all to it. So seems like I'm going to probably go for these two, but we'll see what they do. Like you just have to constantly adjust depending on what your opponent plays and what your opponent does. Okay, so final turn here. Uh, this card, is ongoing if your hand is empty, plus six power. We can't quite empty our hand here, so it's not not going to be great. I think I'm fine with. Hmm, uh, it's probably this and this, if I was going to guess. Uh, so Ironheart on reveal, give three other friendly cards plus two power. So you can play this in a location that you're not really investing heavily in. Um, in order to increase the power of your other locations. That's kind of the, the upside of this. But I'm going to play this one here because this gets a benefit from having more cards in that location. And then I think I'll just throw this one down here so that if they don't do anything in this location, then I can still win it, right? Because if they, if they don't improve at all. Um, this I think this makes me the strongest. The Scarlet Witch destroys that location. Doesn't really matter here because no one's playing more stuff, but you could only play one at that point. Uh, so we won here, we won there, we lost there, but that's fine, right? We end up losing in the middle location, but that's that's all right because we won the other two. Does that make sense? So two, best two out of three. Sometimes you'll win all three, but that's rare. I think the vast majority of the games come down to uh, two, two versus one, right? Just making the right decisions uh, at the end. At the end you, you, of your games, you'll see some of your progress on uh, leveling up uh, your your cars and such. All right, let's do let's do one more game just to make sure I didn't didn't miss miss anything. Let's see if I can go two and zero. Oh. But you can see just like instant instant cues, really quick. And that's one of the great things about the game is you just you don't have to allocate a lot of time to be able to play because it's just one game after the next. Um, it's, it's, it's great for that. So let's see, Monster Metropolis. The cards with the highest power here get plus three power. All right, so I think it's fine to just drop this here. So uh, I'll show you Sunspot in a second. At the end of each turn, gain plus one power for each unspent energy. So this thing just kind of scales up uh, if you if you float mana. All right, so two mana. Let's get, get Angela going when you play a card here, plus two power. So you want to get this down early, and then whenever you play other cards, you make it more powerful, basically. Uh, let's see, add a random card to each player's hand. That's fine. We don't know what this is going to be yet. I'll just put this in the middle. Just kind of, I like to just kind of probe early um, before before I know exactly what my strategy is. I have, have, a, have a little bit in, in, in each location, but who knows if it's the optimal strategy. It's kind of what I, what I tend to do. All right, so let's see. What is this one? After each... After turn three, shuffle your hand into your deck, draw three cards. Okay, so after this turn, we're going to lose our hand. So if there's anything we really want to play this turn, we should do it now. Uh, I think this is definitely our strongest play, Ironheart. 
I actually only have two. Hmm, is it our strongest play? Wave on reveal next turn. Next turn, cards in both players' hand cost four. Hmm, that could be. That's probably bad for the build that we have. This is probably still the best, but not entirely sure. Could could be better to do one one. We have to play a little bit faster while while talking. Okay, so our draw. So Bishop is another one of those. When you play a card, this gains plus one power. So it's another one of those where if you get it down early, then it you know it goes up and up in power level. I think I'm okay with getting it down with a one here. Um, seems okay. Should still have enough mana to, to draw both of these in the later turns. How do I want to put this? It feels like they're very invested here. So let's go with these two. I think I'm just going to kind of punt this location. I think it's pretty unlikely we'll be able to win this one and hope that I can win these other two. It's kind of how the, how the game flow is going currently. Haven't snapped, not feeling like extremely confident or anything. Okay. Mm, can't really dump my hand effectively. I don't think Wave is, is just very good in this spot. I definitely want to play Kazar. Play it here? Sure. This is uh, the deck they were playing Carnage Nova. It used to be really, really strong. They made some adjustments to it. I don't know if it's as strong anymore, but this was like a really meta-defining deck for a long period in the uh, in the beta. I played a, I played a lot of uh, the. It's on the exact list that they're playing, but a similar list. So currently, we're really losing here. We're losing there. I think honestly, we're pretty dead. I'm not going to retreat because, you know, we'll. we'll t We'll take the L. Maybe uh, maybe there's a miracle involved, but I, I don't think there's any way to win from here. I just can't. I, I can. I always win this one, but I can't win another location. So, you know what? Let's just retreat. Let's show you that sometimes you have to be smart and, and realize I can't. Right? I win here. I can't get 11 more power here, and that one I'm way behind. So. Let's save our let's save our cubes and uh, I guess I can retreat later. So retreat later means that if they also retreat, then um, I think it's a, a draw. Not 100% on that, but um, yeah, in that spot I, I knew that they were not going to retreat because they had snapped and they were a lot stronger. So obviously disappointing to lose, but it happens. Uh, you still get you still get progress. Not not the end of the world. Uh, and then yeah, after you're after you're finished playing your games, always go over here and just check your missions. Make sure you. Uh, collect anything you've earned up to that point very easy to click through the menu and do that uh so yeah that's kind of the kind of the the, the general the general uh game flow of marvel snap as you can see really quick games high replayability due to the locations um and uh obviously you know depending on on, on how you draw and just you know just re really really fun uh, gameplay overall hope you guys enjoy Hey guys, it's me, again. I just wanted to wrap up with a few final thoughts about Marvel Snap. One great thing about Snap is that it really is not pay to win. I was completely free to play in the beta and accumulated a collection by doing the weekly quests and missions. You just have to play to earn cards and the upgrades are cosmetics. Granted, they are really cool cosmetics. On that note, I just want to mention that a lot of famous comic artists were hired to create the in-game art, so I hope you guys are as impressed as I am. And finally, Global Launch was on October 18th, so you can download the game right now on Steam and on mobile. Your account progress is shared on mobile and PC, so no need to worry about that. My link below in the description will take you to the App Store to download the game. Thanks so much for watching.